Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Heart Talks. So in the Heart Talks series, I have a conversation with medical educators. And today I've got a very special guest. Um, I'm with Dr. Rohan Francis, who is a consultant cardiologist here in the UK. But you may know him from his YouTube channel, Medlife Crises. Um, so hello, Rohan. Hi there, nice to be here. Thank you so much for making time for this in your busy week. There's so much I want to talk about. And of course, I want to speak about the YouTube channel and how that's evolved over the years. But a lot of my um, viewers are students, so medical students or students even before medical school who may be considering medicine mm -hmm. as a career. So I just want to go back a step and just ask you where you did your training and how was your time in medical school? Um, sure, yeah, I trained at St. George's and I did my BSc at UCL. So I've been a, a London boy for most of my training and, and work, although I did my cardiology training in, in Cambridge and Essex. Um, and medical school, to answer your question about what it was like, was was great. I had a, had a really good time. And, and um, I think one message I try to give to medical students who, off, you know, I teach on a regular basis, there seems to be a bit of a change in the um, environment of medical school compared to when I was at medical school. And perhaps uh, even when you were, I think things in recent years have um, changed somewhat. And I think, you know, a lot of that, unfortunately, is secondary to inflating student debt and, and tuition fees and stuff like that so it is a bit of a different atmosphere but and, and I fully accept that but I feel like I had a huge amount of fun at medical school and um, studying was clearly important but it certainly wasn't the the, the be, all, be all and end all and I was very lucky to get involved in lots of other activities so I'd certainly recommend that to students and particularly, you know, those interested in competitive fields like cardiology, it really makes you stand out when you come to applying for jobs, if you have done some other sorts of things. And I also mentioned that because it, it clearly was instrumental in me ending up on, on YouTube as well. And even though I, I was actually quite late to, to join YouTube just in the last few years, but I did a lot of kind of fun filmmaking at medical school and used to spend my time making little silly short films so um you know i definitely would recommend trying to get a a wide experience of of things if you can and then i came out of medical school did my uh, junior rotations around the london kent surrey area and um, i initially wanted to be a cardi cardiothoracic surgeon that was my plan a and I certainly started down that path initially, but um, for many reasons, I decided to change. I think the, the positive ones were that I really enjoyed medicine. I really enjoyed general medicine and, and the kind of cerebral challenge of being a physician and um, interventional cardiology offered a lot of the sa same hands-on stuff that I really liked about surgery without the horrendous lifestyle that I think unfortunately does come with with cardiac surgery I didn't really have any interest in thoracic surgery so it was really the heart or nothing and I looked at my friends who were you know in in cardiac surgery and I just it, it really is a brutal lifestyle and also um, you know there's quite a high likelihood you'd have to travel uh, a, a bit of a distance so I switched and never looked back and I've, I've been you know very happy with with uh, cardiology ever since oh that's amazing I didn't know that you had explored cardiothoracic surgery how far down the did you start the training or was it the exploration phase that you decided it wasn't for you yeah I did I did probably about a about a year of, of sort of proper surgery um and then um uh, just yeah and then applied to to core medical okay no that's really interesting um i too had a phase of exploring plastic surgery mm. um, so i didn't go into the training aspect but i did the usual courses as you would and yep. uh, i did a what we call taste a week yeah um, during my foundation training and similar to you it's not something i could envisage myself doing and uh, you know all these experiences um, I will say no experience is wasted. All these experiences, you know, get to where you should be 
Um, so hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I think that that's a, another key message I try and impart to juniors and and students is I've taken quite a circuitous path um, to becoming a consultant. It, you know, I took added on lots of time doing research like you're doing, but but also you know just gaining different experience in in various fields. So that's very much my ethos is it's all you know we're all going to be consultants for most of our lives so there's there's no real hurry yeah absolutely and currently um you're a consultant cardiologist and just tell us um tell the viewers what your average week is like um in in your consultant um, work yeah i i mean i think it's fair to say there's a significant um, improvement in your hours moving from registrar to consultant. So I've, I've very much uh, in, enjoyed that aspect. But obviously, the you know the great fun of being a registrar is you get to do all the fun stuff and much less of the boring admin. So I think it's you know a lot of my time now is spent doing more paperwork, clinic admin type roles which is fine and you know obviously that's part of the job but I was very particular that I wanted a district general main base um, because I wanted to maintain that work-life balance and and uh, most ter tertiary um, cardiology centers are, are pretty intense and you know uh, um, all the, the big places where I've I've worked spent a little bit of time at Bart's I don't know it so well but certainly Papworth George's um you know it really is quite a i wouldn't say cutthroat but it's quite an intense work environment and there can be a bit of politics at some of these centers so i was very um keen to um get a, a district general as my main base but i've been very lucky in that i maintain the link to um a, a more specialist center for my interventional procedures so that's you know a great balance and actually uh, you know, a typical week, I'll do two clinics uh, in a week, general cardiology. And um, obviously, if you choose to go into a very specialized path, your end um, area uh, will be more specialized. So you'll do clinics in specific thing. But I, again, I quite enjoy that general aspect. So I'll see all kinds of um, cardiology problems. And I do at present about two full days in the cath lab. Um, and then the, the additional time will be, you know, other other kinds of duties. We um, do something called an SPA. So a consultant's time is divided up into PAs, program activities. And an SPA is where you can sort of pursue things that you're more interested in rather than necessarily service provision. So you can, you know, learn a new skill. And um, uh, definitely I, I feel like I'm getting to spend a lot more time with with my family and and uh, in charge of my own there's a lot more autonomy I think as a consultant is as long as you do the job you're employed to do the rest of the time is you're free to do with what you like yeah I mean I think you made a really important point in terms of deciding where your base is mm. um, so in terms of you know deciding between a district general versus a tertiary center and I think that's so important. And, uh, you know, a lot of my peers, you know, thinking about that um, at the moment in terms of where we see ourselves. And you rightfully said in terms of where you think you will thrive. I think that's the most important yeah. thing, isn't it? And what environment you enjoy, because, you know, it is a lifestyle choice. Yeah, I, exactly. And and I definitely, you know, I've, I've pivoted almost 180 from those early days when I was thinking of cardiac surgery. And as an F1 and F2, I used to kind of really revel in the um, the, the image of being the, the guy who knew everything and was really like, uh, you know, on top of stuff. And I mean, I still like to think that I know things, but um, but I, I, I saw myself as a academic or a tertiary center kind of person. And I've completely reversed that. And I think, you know, life just just takes over. You, you, you develop other responsibilities family all, all that kind of stuff um and i think this it's 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 important to think about these things early on because then you can start trying to tailor your certainly when you enter higher training i think you should be having an eye on the future clearly if you want to do something really 
specialist. I mean, I absolutely adored my transplant um, experience at Papworth. That was probably the best six months of my career doing a, a field that very few people get to get to do. And it almost made me want to change direction. But, you know, if you choose something like transplant, you're limiting yourself to six centres in the whole UK and you're really kind of waiting until somebody retires to, to get a job. So you've got to think about these things in the future. You, you know, something very specialist might really interest you, but you've got to consider, well, where am I going to get a job? You know, how, much, how long will I have to wait? Um, so absolutely, it's, it's never too early to start thinking about these things. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, in terms of, you mentioned earlier that uh, there was a little bit more autonomy with your time as a consultant. Has, has it still required a lot of time management um, with regards to the YouTube channel? Do you have to be quite um, structured? I mean, do you have a process when you decide on a video? What is your process like? I'm pretty ad hoc. Um... And I've on, only recently for the last, <clears throat> excuse me, for the last um, couple of videos for the, you know, sort of three years into the channel, I've hired an editor, which I should have done a long time ago because I was doing everything on my own. And I was doing that kind of just, just for fun. I wanted to learn how to do these things. So it was, it was like a hobby. And that's how I always think about it. it is, it's a hobby. And I don't want it to get to the stage where I feel like it's a second career and I'm, you know, feeling pressure. I've got to upload so, you know, moving out of London to Essex, as I as I did um, uh, to start this consultant job, uh, moved house, new job, you know, lots of things to do in the house. And actually, I just took a few months where I really didn't upload much at all. And, you know, I didn't feel bad about that. And I, I, a lot of my friends who are full time YouTubers, I think, get kind of burnt out. And they feel a lot of pressure to, to post a lot of the time. So I think if, if you do want to do something as a bit of a side side hustle, um, whatever it is, then uh, make sure you're enjoying it because otherwise you're just adding additional obligations onto your plate. Um, so to answer your question about what my process is, I don't really have one. I'm a bit um, disorganized. Um, the next video probably is going to go up, say, tomorrow. And that's in response to something in the news. So, you know, I'll occasionally do that and I'll try and turn a video around quite fast. And, and that's a more basic kind of just talking. But then there are some passion projects that I'll spend months on um, and I'll just try and just do them as and when. Um, so, uh, yeah, time management, I, I wouldn't say I'm particularly strong at it, but I try to get things done. You know, I, I try not to, to waste time and I don't really watch a lot of tv i don't really sleep very much which i'm not sure is the best message to give but uh um there's always there's always something to do and and um uh, as long as you're enjoying what you're do doing you know i think that's the main thing absolutely i mean what you just said has really reassured me because i'm currently in a registrar and stage of my career um and i was thinking the other day you know how do yourself um, as a consultant, others who are on YouTube, how do they manage their time? And from my conversations, you've said what others have said in terms of you have to enjoy it. It doesn't feel like work. Mm. Um, so, you know, it kind of naturally fits into your life. But uh, you mentioned earlier that you almost had an affinity towards video making or creativity, that aspect, even from medical school. So I want to ask you, where did this idea of creating a YouTube channel, a medical YouTube channel come about? Because when you started, I'm sure there wasn't many other channels, there's probably a handful, but where did the idea come to you? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I do feel like a big regret is not starting sooner because I had had the idea a long time ago to, to do something and I just, you know, for whatever reason, just, just you know, didn't. Um, and it's particularly disappointing because as I was saying, medical school, so, you know, my main background was actually in print journalism so I was I was a very keen writer and I used to edit the student paper and write in different places and um and I you know I should have just I just kind of completely abandoned it um which really is a, is a bit of a um something I regret I think you know I'm not beating myself up about it too much I, I got busy with being a 
a junior doctor and just you know learning the stuff I had to learn and, and focusing on the job. So it's 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 not a, a complete mistake, but it was that background of uh, you know my channel is very much kind of more trying to tell interesting stories or um, just stuff that I am interested in uh, about medicine rather than a straight medical education channel. Um, and um, I've always enjoyed kind of giving talks and, and public speaking and that kind of thing. And I was um, I only really got on social media during the junior doctor contract protests a few years ago. There was some um, a lot of anger within junior doctor ranks about um, changes coming in from the government and, and changes to how we work. And I wanted to follow what was going on. So I was like, oh, you know, there were, we used to have a website that was the kind of go-to place called doctors.net.uk. And that's where I used to kind of check. And, and I found it had kind of been deserted. So I asked my friends, you know, where do I find out about the protest? What's, what's the news? And people said, it's all on, on Twitter. So I joined Twitter again, very late. I joined in sort of 2015, 16, and um, quickly got quite bored of medical politics. And then found that it was a really cool way to actually do some education. So I'd post ECGs, I'd post echoes, and, and then I'd started a PhD in cardiac MRI. So I had these beautiful MRI pictures to share, which again was quite unusual, not, you know, echo, I think it, 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 we see a lot more of. Um, and just found I really enjoyed that. And then somebody said, well, why don't you just, uh, well, I was doing a, 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 a comedy gig um, so this is a kind of geeky science stand-up comedy event and somebody said you know you should you should just you should film this and just put it online and then I realized oh yeah yeah I should <laughs> and that, that was how it started so um, it was kind of more from the science communication comedic angle that I came at it and I didn't want to be um, uh, I think trying to make a straight medical education channel either directed at medical students or patients I think is a challenge because you're you're going up against a lot of competition and you know a lot of them with with quite a lot of resources behind them so um, I try to carve out this little niche as clinically useless um, but kind of interesting that's my that's the goal I'm going for these aren't going to help anybody my videos <laughs> No, I mean, um, like you say, you've certainly, I mean, I really enjoy watching your videos. And um, what comes out to me is you certainly have a unique style. Um, you, like you say, you combine humour, but also you do educate. And I do find your videos very educational. Um, so it's entertaining yet educational. But would you say that having been on YouTube now for a few years, um, that you're a lot more conscious of what you put out or is it still um, you know in response to current affairs or is there any topics that interest you has your approach to the topic changed over the years yeah I think that's a, that's a very good question I, I mean to begin with I just put out stuff that I found interesting and actually I used it as a, a way to do a bit of homework you know I, I'm not going to probably read a lot of statistics you know ha having except for research i was doing but i'd if i wanted to make a five minute video on false positives or false negatives for a general audience then i'd i'd force myself to actually get really familiar with the topic so i found it was it was purely selfish really at the beginning i was choosing topics that i wanted to to learn about but then, of course then the pandemic happened and then that's when i felt for the first time actually maybe i've got some sort of duty to, to 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 make some stuff here so it, it really did change my feeling to the channel and you know with more attention as the channel gets bigger then yeah you start you start worrying and 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 you know compared to a lot of the stuff online um who just put out any old stuff you know nonsense and no fact checking at all i uh i kind of worry a lot that I'm going to say something incorrect. So I try and fact check as much as possible. Um, but there definitely is that, that fear that if not sort of giving misinformation or anything myself, but I've communicated it in a bad way. So somebody's come a, away with the wrong message. And I think, 
you know, that probably has happened from time to time. And I try and achieve a certain nuance, but, you know, people are going to interpret it in different ways. And clearly talking about vaccines or COVID, um, there is a lot of potential for, for, for these kinds of things to have big impacts. So I did a, a quite a lot of COVID related stuff, but I have consciously moved away from that in a, in a big way because I'm aware that I'm not a specialist in the field and none of my videos were coming across like that. It was more trying to explain certain concepts. Uh, the one exception would be all the COVID myocarditis, vaccine myocarditis kinds of topics, because I felt like actually there, you know, as one of the cardiologists on, on, I mean, there's really only two of us in the UK, you've already interviewed Sanjay, who's the other, and, uh, and then I can only think of another one, really, that, that's uh, on, on uh, YouTube with your, yourself as the exception. Um, and uh, so I thought, actually, that's quite an important topic that I could contribute. But I, I've moved more away from that now. And um, uh, I think becoming a consultant has also freed up my hands a little bit in that I feel I want to take on some more controversial topics. So I've done some videos on um, recreational drugs, and I've got one plan which I've wanted to do for a long time, but I didn't quite feel able to do it as a registrar, which is about assisted dying. And, and that's another thing I feel really strongly about. So I want to try and tackle that soon as well. I mean, you touched on a point that I've been thinking about as well, because a lot of the times when I think of a, you know, a video idea, I'm like, you know, I, I, I can't do this because this is like a consultant should be saying this, right? So there's there's some topics that I feel like, oh, I'm not qualified because not really cardiology, it's kind of borders another specialty. Um, and what you're saying now that becoming a consultant has given you that, that you know, that confidence, I guess, um, to put out videos and be more opinionated. Would that be accurate? Yeah. I mean, I think I think I've always been quite quite opinionated, but but yes, I think definitely it has given me more confidence. And um, you know, I we've all heard horror stories of trainees whose um, training program um, director has has been very upset by something they've done or whatever. And obviously, as a consultant, you're still uh, very susceptible to, to your hospital taking a dim view of something you're doing. But at the end of the day, I also know, you know, I'm not saying anything. Uh, really out of line. Um, I mean, I think the whole topic of what you are able to talk about is, is a really interesting one. And I spend a lot of my time now thinking and, and, and talking about doctors on social media, or all, all, all um, platforms. And, um, you know, I think the fact that you are thinking carefully about what you're able to say already sets you apart from most medics online, who are apparently quite happy to just sort of spout uh, about all kinds of fields and you know often they're very junior and the problem is the public don't perceive that difference you know you'll have an f1 or a medical student talking very authoritatively about mental health or diet because those are hot topics and they know that they're going to get lots of engagement when you know saying something like this and you know best case scenario they're just repeating accepted guidance but worst case scenario they're saying something a bit off message you know and uh, that happens on a regular basis so actually I've changed my opinion I feel like if you do have a bit of um, uh, relevant experience even if it is not directly your field and you can say something helpful to counter mi mixed messaging out there I think actually it's a good idea so uh, as you know the, the the thing that I try and bear in mind is I'm not portraying myself as that expert you know I'm not if I'm talking about um, you know COVID then I'm not saying I'm a virologist I'm an immunologist or public health official but I'm trying to just help explain certain concepts in a, in a more easy way without putting my own spin on it so yes. yeah I think that's that's a key thing is am I an expert in this field if not then I don't want to depict myself as such yeah yeah no I completely understand where you're coming from I mean my approach is to, to generally um very cautious in terms of what I say um I 
I do kind of prepare the scripts myself and make sure that um, it's, it sounds like me and stuff. But no, I completely appreciate that cautious approach. Um, what opportunities has YouTube opened for you? Uh, I mean, I, th I think it's, it's fair to say it's completely kind of changed my whole career, really. And um, possibly the, the biggest thing is, is a bit of uh, maybe not security, but, you know, I think in, in today's day and age, and we all know that, I mean, for the, those of your viewers who are in the UK, I think we all know the challenges the NHS is facing. And a lot of my colleagues are leaving, you know, that they're, they're, they're feeling completely fed up with with the work environment and increasing amounts of work um many are going overseas but um quite a few are, are just leaving medicine entirely which you know obviously is is very sad and for me having this additional aspect that i enjoy doing um means that i'm much less kind of ground down by the by the system so i think that's the key thing um for example you know uh, a lot of consultants will come out and do private work or something. Well, you know, I'm I'm not pursuing that at the moment. For me, this is my kind of private work, if you like. This is this is my outside interest. Um, so I think that's really helped, um, and it's uh, just introduced me to all kinds of people that I wouldn't have met otherwise. So, um, as I said, you know, most of my friends are, are full time content creators and. Uh, it's just a, it's just a whole new kind of social circle and i've been to all kinds of cool events in in different countries and um you know i'm just still in that novelty phase like oh wow isn't this cool and you know i think medics we have a very blinkered attitude not only in terms of just you know because we work hard and and spend, have long hours and are less able to 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 do lots of different things um we end up kind of mostly knowing other medics and mostly kind of talking about medicine and, and I think it's great to, to to just have that and I've met all kinds of very interesting people in terms of relevance to the job itself um, I've kind of um, become a a person to, to, to go to when people within medicine want to do some sort of video project so often people will will consult me about you know how to to get a project off the ground and I've done a bit of proper medical education so some cardiology videos we've, we've made and I, I'd love to to keep building on that because I want to um, you know not just cater to a general audience but I, I, I'm keen to um, make some video material for for cardiologists as, and, and medical students and all kinds of people as well so yeah it's been it's been very transformative. You know, that's really amazing to hear and I'm so glad that you're seeing the fruits of your um, of your efforts, um, and if I can just finish up by asking you to just give advice to anyone out there who may be thinking about starting a YouTube channel, what advice would you give them, having been in the business for a few years now? Right. Well, that's uh, a big question. Um, I mean, nowadays it's pretty uncommon for a medical student to not have a youtube yeah. channel you know i i I, uh, I meet so many um and and that's that's great i think the key messages i'd give is is if you, if you start thinking of starting a channel then you know go right ahead but i came to it sort of you know late as i was saying and, and i was also fairly senior i was already uh, been at british Star for a, quite a few years by the time i started whereas getting into it as a medical student or an F1, um, there's a lot of interest in medicine as, as a field from, from the general public. We know that from all how many TV shows are set in hospitals. And people are going to be interested in, in what you're doing. But, you know, when I was a medical student or a, a junior doctor, I hadn't formed a lot of these kinds of thought processes and opinions, which have taken quite a few years. Oh, thanks a lot um, to to develop. So I think I would have struggled to to fill uh, you know to generate content. And what I see as a pitfall is sometimes people use their own personal lives as content. 
So this is something that I, I, I do find quite concerning is how willing a lot of and how normalized it's become to share a lot of your life online. And, you know, this is not exclusive to medicine. And in fact, it's, you know, it's much worse in other as, uh, other fields. But if you are a vlogger and you're documenting your time at medical school, your highs, your lows and everything, that might feel fine and, and you might and you'll certainly see a, a, an increase in engagement because there is this parasocial aspect to a lot of, of um, uh, content online that's a phrase which is a very interesting concept of how social media has has seen one-way relationships so people will see your life your exam preparation your studying and all that kind of thing and they'll think you they they know you and so they develop this kind of friendship with you even though it's completely you know one way and these so people get um invested in in personalities they see online and a few years down the line almost invariably this can lead to, to problems when you know your you've commodi commodified your own personal life so that, i think that's one of the biggest pitfalls is just be cautious kind of what things you're you're sharing online and obviously it goes without saying sharing anything patient related you've got to be meticulously careful and you know all the kind of normal advice about confidentiality and things so you know i think it's tempting to reach for 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 interesting stories from the ward you know we've, we've seen popular um comedic kind of depictions of things happening in the nhs on on tv and in books and it's tempting to want to tell funny stories but you know a lot of these people telling these stories in the media are they've left medicine and and i think if, if you're still inside the field you've got to be careful what kind of things you're sharing and then um i guess that more positive spin that all sounds a bit negative um but i think it's 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 reasonable to, to flag these things up because i think there are a lot of pitfalls with with social media uh but a more positive bit of advice i'd probably give is what do you bring that is going to set you apart a little bit what what is your kind of you know uh why, why should i watch your channel versus all these other ones because i think what can really dishearten people is when they start they put a lo lot of effort in and they find they're not developing getting the traction and and you know that is rarely to do with them it's just the algorithm and, and the way it works but if you have something that kind of you know is a little bit of a hook so in my you know in my case I, I saw there are medical creators out there but kind of bringing more kind of humor to it was a bit of a different thing um then uh you know th there are just see what what may set you apart and and that may take a while to work on so definitely just get started get practicing make some videos make awful videos get better each one you'll you'll learn something else so you know i, I don't be a perfectionist yeah you know just get it online get some feedback just just have fun you know enjoy it oh, absolutely the very wise words and um, and on that note, I want to thank you, Rohan, for making time for this. And right. please continue to do what you're doing. I mean, it's not only educational, but entertaining. And I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying the process and your new chapter in your life, your consultant chapter has allowed time for it. Um, so thank you again. I'm going to leave Rohan's um, links in the description below where you can find him and do check out his channel if you're not aware i'm sure you are but um it's certainly worthwhile to visit so thank you very much Ray. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure thank you very much for inviting me please and, and all the best with your career and your channel as well thank you very much thank you